Hey, I'm Ben Justice. I'm the offensive coordinator at Velma Elma High School in Velma, Oklahoma. Uh, we went eight man a couple years ago. Uh, this is uh, wide zone and eight man football. Uh, it's a scheme that we put in uh, this last year and started running quite a bit. Uh, why do we want to run the wide zone? Uh, it, it's multiple. We can run it out of uh, multiple personnel groupings, multiple formations, a lot of different tags that we can use off this. Um, and it's great against any defense. Uh, that's part of that, that multiple. We can use it with different motions. It it's really just fits whatever group of kids we have out there on the field at that time. It doesn't matter if we're in one back, two back, empty. We can use it all game, uh, first down, second down, third down. It doesn't matter. It's easy to build upon and protect all the constraint plays. Um, it, it opens up so much more of your offense when this becomes one of your base plays. The the counters, the, all the play action passing, it really opens up. And defenses have a hard time trying to fit it with it going sideline to sideline. It opens up a lot of running lanes. And so it's easy to find and watch the defense and, and call that next play, uh, which really leads to the next thing of it creates explosive plays. We can find uh, them secondary run fitters that are coming down in the box and allowing us to throw passes over the top. Uh, if linebackers start chasing, we can run our counters, run our, our, our GT, or our traps, or anything like that. Uh, and then probably one of the other biggest things with it is it limits our negative plays. We don't have a lot of plays that are negative. We are able to stay in front of the chains. It's a good first down call. I know the next down, I want to be looking at something that uh, is, is second and, and probably eight, second seven, maybe second and five. Uh, I'm never going to be looking at, at second and 12, second and 13, rarely, unless there's a penalty. Uh, but other than that, you're going to set yourself up for a good situation the next down. Uh, our blocking rules on it. Uh, we try to keep things pretty simple. We're an up-tempo, no-huddle team. Um, so we want our kids to, to have really simple rules. So when we get up there, they're not having to think a lot because we're going to try to snap it as soon as we can get set and go. So uh, starting with our covered linemen, if they have someone on them, they're going to try to get their backside knee to their crotch. Uh, we don't worry so much about the, the, the first step because the, the second step, if they're trying to get their back, backside knee to the crotch, it kind of takes care of itself. So we don't focus on it too much. Uh, as long as it's quick, we just want them to get it in the ground and get moving and, and try to get that horizontal movement and getting guys running sideline to sideline. Uh, and they need to be ready to have some sort of possible combo call with an uncovered lineman. Uh, there are weeks though, where we will tell them, Hey, we're not going to do any comboing. We're just going to work up because with uh, a lot of these three, two teams that we see in eight man, uh, they'll take their linebackers and walk them up. And so it's almost like they're covered. So our our covered linemen need to know how close the linebackers are, if they're walked up or if they're back, or maybe if we just game planned it that week of, hey, we're just going to solo block this, and this is just the technique that you're going to have to use. Uh, a lot of times, though, if we can combo, we want to combo. Uh, our uncovered linemen, their rules are simple. They're just going to combo the linebacker. Uh, and they're basically going to use the same technique if they're going to try to get their backside knee to crotch of the, the, the covered lineman to his defender. Uh, and then from there, we tell them, hey, knock it over, take it over, climb. We try to keep it real simple. If you can't take it over, give that guy, put a hand on him, push him over, and then work up to that next level and take the linebacker. Uh, if that guy spikes inside, take him, let the – let your you know other lineman climb up to the linebacker and take him. Uh, but we try to keep it simple. We really don't want to overcoach it just because we don't want to slow down the tempo. We don't want them thinking. We want them to just be able to go out there and play fast. So we try to keep our rules really simple. We even run this with our junior high team, and, and it's the same rules. Hey, you're going to get your backside knee to crotch, and uh, if you're uncovered, knock it over, take it over, climb. The, the technique for the running back uh, and alignment – we have him put his heels on the toes of the quarterback so he can work flat across, but he's going to aim at the butt of the tight end, uh, which is, you know, normally kind of tight, uh, but it allows him a, a, an easy read of which way he's going to go. And so if that tight end gets the end reached, 
we're going to work outside and try to get on the edge and get to running. Uh, but a lot of times what's going to happen is some DNs are going to fight outside and, and it's an easy read. He is then immediately going to look back into the next uh, covered lineman, which a lot of times is the center, and then he can cut off the center's block. And sometimes this play will cut back all the way to the backside A or B gap. But we've got so much horizontal movement that that cut happens about five yards wider than what the A gap originally started. Uh, so, and then we're going to teach him make a cut and live with it, make a decision, get vertical, get what you can get, uh, don't dance around, go get us positive yards, and then we can call the next play. Some of the tags and adjustments off of it, uh, we can call them option, uh, where we can option off the, the defensive end, uh, the corner, or the safety. This is an easy way to keep them secondary run fitters out of it if you're having a problem with them coming down and making tackles. Uh, a lot of times we'll get in twins and run this to a, a nub side tight end and, and really watch what that corner's doing. If he's coming down and making plays, we can pitch off him and then still have the same run scheme and we're not having to throw the ball in case it's like at the end of the fourth quarter and we're trying to run some time off the clock and we really don't want to take a chance throwing it. We can tag it with his option and take care of him that way. Or same with the safety. If a safety's coming down and making plays on it, we can just tag option and, and read that safety. And when he goes flying out, then our quarterback can stick a foot in the ground and get vertical. Um, in between the, the guards. Uh, we can also add some motion and window dress it. You can, uh, you can fake the jet. You can uh, just simply change the formation from pro to twins or twins to pro. Uh, we have used some orbit motion where we take the, the motion guy behind and have run some RPOs with it. And then same with the yo-yo motion, we'll motion a wide receiver in and then bubble him back out to the side that he come from, uh, which is part of those RPOs. We can do it with motion, without motion. Uh, we'll have some quick screens or maybe some quick game on the backside to try to hold some of them secondary defenders uh, and just try to limit people from getting in the box so that way we can still have a hat on a hat on the inside and be able to run this play successfully. Some of the game planning uh, thoughts on it. Uh, what is their base alignment? Uh, a lot of times from in, in Oklahoma, we're going to see a 3-2. Uh, but we do see a lot of teams every now and then that'll run a 3-3 or maybe some sort of 2-3 or 4-1. Uh, and so we want to know, hey, where are the possible combos at uh, and, and where the single block's going to happen. And then some of the next questions are, who can we not block? Uh, is it the safety? Is it the corner? Uh, maybe it is it a linebacker that's really talented and we need to try to figure out a way to read him because our, our guards is not as good as – is what their linebackers are. We're going to have a hard time blocking them. Uh, so then the next question is, how do we handle that person? Are we going to RPO that person? Uh, are we going to run the, the option plays off of them? Uh, do we need to combo that person? If they have a dominant nose, do we need to try to really be able to stay on him longer? Uh, and then what other plays do we want to protect the, the wide zone with? The play actions, counter, uh, and then also that goes with some of the options and the RPOs of just being able to slow the defensive pursuit down and stop them. And then that creates some of them extra uh, lanes to run and makes them a little wider. And we can find those explosive plays then, uh, which is the next thing of, of how can we find explosive plays, which guys really run to the football because they're going to, they're going to over pursue and they're going to open up lanes for something else, uh, whether that's running the football or throwing the football. We always just want to try to find ways to get the ball down the field quickly and as efficiently as possible. And, and this play does a great job of setting up those plays. Here's some diagrams of the play. You can see we have a, uh, a covered tight end right here. So he's going to try to get his backside knee to crotch. Our play side guard is uncovered. So he is going to combo this D end to the linebacker. Our center is covered and he's just going to try to get his backside knee to crotch of the nose. And then our backside guard, same rules of he is going to combo this nose to this backer. Uh, sometimes we'll just tell these guards if these backers are walked up kind of closer just to go there straight immediately and just try to get a hat on a hat and take care of those guys. Uh, the, the guy that we're really watching when I'm on the sideline is a safety. 
just trying to make sure he's not coming down in the box and making plays. And then that opens up a lot of those explosive plays like we talked about. Here's the play against a 3-3 a stack. Uh, this is probably the second most common defense that we see. Uh, the, the big question is how, is we gonna, how are we going to handle the, the stacks? Uh, can we get this overtaken and have our, our center climb to the middle linebacker? Uh, and then same on the other side of a lot of times these DNs will play on four I. And so that's a great time to, to tag the option. And then we can actually pitch off that end, let our guard work up to the mic and give us a better angle. And then we can arc the tight end for the, the safety or a Sam linebacker, whatever you want to call them. And then you can pitch off that end and it still basically keeps the same scheme and protects that play. And it, it stops them uh, from putting that extra hat in the box and takes care of him. Here's the play against a, a, a two, three or a four, one. Um, the only, the issue with this defense is they basically cover up all your linemen except for your center. So it limits the combos that you have. Uh, we're normally in a three, two or three, three, we could have two possible combos in this defense. There's, there's only one place that we can combo and that's the center, uh, on this play side tackle or defensive end. Um, but we don't, it doesn't matter. We can still do whatever there. Um, Typically, we'll like some other plays against this, uh, but it still can be a really effective play. All right, let's take a look at some film on it. Uh, so this is us running it out of a, a pro formation. Uh, so our tight end and our guard should be comboing this DN to this backer right here. This is a 3-3 stack look. And then our guard, our backside guard, and our center should be comboing the nose uh, to the stacked Mike linebacker. And then our quarterback is going to read this backside end and, and hold him. So I'll try to go in slow motion right here. Uh, our, our play side guard actually messes up and goes uh, to the mic when he should be comboing right here uh, to this stacked linebacker. But you can see on the backside here, our backside guard is able to overtake uh, on the nose and then our center is able to climb to the mic, which then allows for some nice cutback lanes. And this kid's able to take it uh, for six. All right, this is us running it against a 3-2 defense. Um, so our play side guard here should be comboing this DN to this linebacker. But since this linebacker is walked up, uh, this is one of them weeks where we probably just let him just go straight there. And then our backside guard, uh, depending on the depth of this linebacker, is either going to go straight there or combo this nose to the linebacker. So you can see the defense is really starting to flow. Uh, this, this nose this week is really trying to read our center's hat and run uh, side to side with him. So our, our running back is reading this tight end. The defensive end keeps continuing to fight out. So then he looks to the next cover lineman, which is the center. The nose has overrun the play. And then our running back is able to stick a foot in the ground and get vertical and ends up getting a nice five to six yard gain on this play. And all we did was just make the defense run and, and widen. And we really didn't have to have any just great blocks. We we're just able just to move them uh, with the path of our running back and with our linemen really trying to work sideline to sideline. Uh, here it is against a 3-3 three, three stack team again. Uh, they're starting to do some stuff where they're moving their, their guys around and starting to put them in gaps. Uh, but it, it doesn't really matter for us because we just continue to follow our rules and just and just block covered, uncovered, and work those combos. So they started to shade the nose. Well, are, are we still reading the tight end first? The tight end 
his butt is pointed in. So our running back knows he should look to the next read, the which is the the next cover lineman, which is the center. And so he's going to cut off him. They overrun the play, and we get a nice gain. All right, here we are running out of a twin set. Uh, so we'll do this every now and then to uh, change the secondary run fitter. Uh, and so we're going to try to put this corner into the fit now and, and make him come down and make plays and make, make a different secondary run fitter make tackles. You can see on this play, our backside guard does a really good job of, of going flat down the line. This nose slants to the backside, but it doesn't matter. So he's able to pick him up. And then our running back is still reading that tight end. The defensive end fights out and then he makes a cut. Our play side guard doesn't do a very good job of comboing to where he's supposed to go. But it, we're still with the, with the action of the play and, and putting that corner in the run fit who's usually not used to it. We're still able to get a, a four or five yard gain and puts us in a good situation on second down. All right, so here we are running out of a twin set again. This is against a 3-2 team. Every now and then you'll get some teams that will want to try to cut your lineman, uh, which it really doesn't matter for us. They try to cut our center right here, uh, but it's still the same read for our, our back. You can see that the, the tight end hasn't got his guy reached, so he just sticks a foot in the ground and gets north and south and is able to get a nice five yard gain on his play also, setting us up a second and five and opens up the whole playbook. All right, here we are running out of a twin set against a, a two, three defense. Uh, like I said, this isn't our, our favorite play against this defense, just because we only get one combo, which is the, the center and the play side guard, but it can still be a really great play just to make them try to be sound in their run fits and, and run with you sideline to sideline. So as we start here, you can see the, the combo from the center. He, he knocks him over. I'd like to see a little more physical uh, there, but he does try to knock him over. And then our back's able to make a cut right there off our center and get a nice 12 yard gain out of this. Here we are again, it's the, uh, that 3-3 three, three stack team, and they've started to slide their linebackers over uh, and try to account for us running it this way. Um, and, and this play, another thing with it is, you know, talking about the being multiple on the personnel, this is actually our backup quarterback in here. And so if you do have something where you're, you're starting quarterbacks down, uh, this is an easy play for your backup. It allows him to go in there and still be able to play because uh, all he's doing is handing it off, and then he can have some easy passing game on some play action whenever the secondary run fitters start coming down and, and really playing in the box. So you can see right here where our running back is reading that tight end. The end fights out, and so he sticks a foot in the ground and gets north and south and ends up cutting it back. Uh, and this is a 16-yard gain. Oh. Uh, where we really didn't have to uh, to work too hard. So this is a clip of that same game with our backup quarterback still in. You can see our, uh, this is a great job of the tight end and the play side guard working that combo against a 3-3 three, three stack. This time the defensive end starts to fight inside. And then our guard is able to take it over. And our tight end works up to the next level. You can see our running back is still stretching it out wide because of the read of the tight end. And then he finally makes a cut and gets vertical and gets five yards out of this.
All right, here we are dressing it up with some motion. Uh, this is the orbit motion that I talked about earlier. Uh, this is a good way just to, to, to make the defense start looking and seeing different things going on and just kind of give them a little eye candy. And so you can see this backside linebacker right here is really slowed down by the motion and is having a hard time trying to figure out if he should widen out because uh, maybe we're going to run something where we uh, toss it out there to the motion guy. And so it gives our backside guard a chance to get up there to second level and get him reached and get him cut off. Uh, now, we don't get a very good block by our play side guard. Uh, we'd like to see him do a better job and take it take a better path and get get a body on a body because if he does it allows us to, to have a big play but even with him missing right here it's still a one yard gain and setting us up for a manageable situation on the next down all right so this is the the option playoff of it so right here we're going to be pitching off the the corner it's the same play as earlier except uh quarterback is now the main guy and he's going to read the tight ends block just like he would if he was the running back so he's going to take off right at the, the butt of the tight end and if the tight end works uh his butt inside because that deep that defensive end won't get reached and he keeps fighting out he is just going to stick a foot in the ground and get vertical and then a lot of times you can get some big plays off this because that secondary run fitter uh, who the guy is that normally comes down and makes a tackle is, is chasing the pitch man. And so you can see right here, the corner runs out. Our quarterback uh, is able to make a cut. And then the backside safety is actually the guy that comes in and makes a tackle. Uh, but I think uh, just about anybody would be fine with that and, and would live with that. All right, here's the, the, the option playoff of it again. So this time we're going to option off the, the safety. Uh, if we if we end up going outside the tight ends block. So he's going to read the tight ends block first. The, the tight end uh, doesn't get his guy reached. So he just sticks a foot in the ground and gets vertical. And then we're able to get a nice gain out of this. All right, here's the, the option play off of this again. Uh, so we're going to be option off the safety. Uh, he's somewhere back here off the screen. But it's the same read. Our quarterback's going to start off towards the tight end. Tight end wasn't able to get him reached. So he sticks a foot in the ground and then gets, uh, gets vertical. And it ends up coming back and making this backside corner miss and then gets about a 50-yard gain. And then another way with protecting this play uh, is just the play action passing off of it. So we ran this play a few times this game and this corner on this tight end side uh, is really starting to come down and be in the run fit. So we're just going to fake the, the stretch play and then sneak the tight end vertical. And your tight ends can really set this play up if they'll take an outside release and, and try to make it look basically the same path as that as the wide zone just like they were blocking earlier. And then it winds up being an easy six points for us. Here it is again. We're faking the stretch play. The corner's coming down and, and just got his eyes in the backfield. If you catch some guys looking and not watching their pass responsibility, it opens up some really big plays and it's those explosive plays that we're looking for. Here's another play action off of this. Uh, their, their stack backer is walked down and they're really trying to be a part of the run fit here. And so it's just an easy play action. Our tight end can, can take a step towards him, basically. He doesn't do a very good right there. Uh, but because he's walked up and he's got his eyes in the backfield, it allows us to have a big play. Yeah. 
And then it also opens up some of your other run game. Uh, so this team is, is really starting to flow. You can see their nose is trying to read our center's hat and work across. And so then we just run a simple quarterback counter and we can get a hat on a hat and then go and find a way and get six points out of it. And so this is another part of that, just finding ways to protect the play and opening up the rest of your defense uh, just by having a, a simple play that, that really stretches the defense horizontally. And then once you start seeing them overreact and moving, then you can call these other plays off of this. I hope this has helped. Uh, I hope you guys have learned a lot from this. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, I know there's a lot of other guys that, that do a great job of teaching this. We've stolen a lot of it from other people. Uh, and I and we've modified it a little bit for eight man and I'd be more than willing to to help you. So just uh, email me and, and I can I can call you or text you and, and we can visit some more on it. And uh, it's a pleasure being on here for a second time. I want to thank uh, coach for having me on here again.